What's up everybody, in this video you are going to learn a simple process for automating the testing and training of your deep reinforcement learning agents. You don't need any prior exposure to the command line, all you need to be able to do is follow along. Let's get started. So the core module we're going to need for this is argparse. And this is a built-in module for Python that allows us to parse command line options. We'll also need Jim, and we're going to use a deep Q learning agent from my YouTube uh, GitHub repository just for simplicity. So we will import that learning uh, learning dot deep Q learning dot utils import plot learning. And if you didn't know, if you have a nested directory structure, you can use the period to separate the directories and uh, the final thing should be the file that you want to import from minus the dot pi extension of course uh, but you can use this to traverse a directory structure to import modules from uh, files from other directories just to make your life simpler so you don't have to copy stuff back and forth and we'll be using the simple deep Q learning network from uh, a previous video I did I will link that here if you want to check it out it's pretty good so we want to enter our main program and we need to create a parser so what this does is it will parse command line options from uh, text from the command line into either strings, integers, floats, or whatever data type we need. And we're going to pass these to the creation of our model to actually automate the process of training. So it's important to have a description so that way when you come back to this in six months you know what you were doing. Let's actually do this. Utility for training RL models and then you want to go about the process of adding arguments so when you're um, processing command line arguments you can either have one hyphen or two in the case of the arg parser we're using here if you don't have a hyphen then it is a required option so I will show you that so type equals int default equals one and you always want to have a help statement so that way people can know what is going on. So help equals number of games to play. Uh, so I need to go back up here and fix my directory structure. One second, youtube dot reinforcement learning tube dot. Uh, and so let's go ahead and pause, not pause here, but let's go ahead and uh, create these arguments to see what it is that we're working with to get a feel for how this works. So you want to say args equals parser dot at uh, sorry parse args, and so then we can say print args dot n games, and that will print the number of games that we pass in. So um, let's go ahead and run that from the command line. Let me head to the terminal and I'll show you how it works. So here we are. Let's go ahead and run it. Uh, I have a feeling I I can see the code. I definitely forgot a equal sign in the name equals main. I will prove that to you. See, yeah, I forgot that. Let me go ahead and add that. Save and run. And okay, what we see is an error. The following arguments are required end games. So if we head back into the code editor and add in the hyphen, then it becomes optional. So let me show you that. So right here I have added in the hyphen in front of end games and that makes it optional. So just remember that the hyphen makes argument optional. And that way uh, if you want to enforce strict requirements on the usage for the end user then you go ahead and leave off that hyphen so that it throws an error when they try to run it without a required parameter. Now let's go back to the terminal and run this once more to see what we actually get. Okay, so let's run it again, and we get one. So that is the default value for the number of games. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we added in the hyphen, it makes it optional. Now let's say end games 100, and it prints out 100 precisely as you would expect. That's pretty cool. So let's go back to the code editor and add in a whole slew of parameters that we would use for training reinforcement learning agents so that we can automate this process. 
Okay, so now it's just a matter of adding in a whole slew of parameters that we're going to be using for the automated training of our agents. And the end goal of this is to be able to type in a command at the terminal and then walk away and come back in the morning to a bunch of pretty plots that tell you how all of your combinations of parameters did. Uh, that's important for fine-tuning your models. We'll do uh, broad steps, you know, order of magnitude type changes and learning rates and such, and see how that affects the agent. And then you can come back the following day and fine-tune around those points that look like they might be promising. So let's add another argument, and that will be a learning rate. And that is, of course, type float, a default, I don't know, let's say 001. Maybe we're using Adam, who knows. Uh, you can even uh, set the optimizer to be a command line parameter and then just modify the code in the model uh, class definition to accommodate multiple optimizers. Equals um, learning rate for optimizer. And we will add in also for a deep Q learning agent. You can see that's what I'm going to be using here, the simple DQN from Torch. We're going to need an epsilon end, and that is the final value for um, the epsilon greedy action selection gradual decay over time. Zero point, sorry, zero one, let's say, no, zero two five, so that way it takes some amount of random steps. So, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and speed this up while I type in the rest of the arguments. Uh, there's nothing really uh, magical about the arguments I'm adding. I just want to show you the process for automating your training of reinforcement learning agents. So let's do this real quick. Okay, so that is pretty much all the parameters we're going to need for training our agent. So we have the number of games. That's the number of games it's going to play. The learning rate, that is, of course, the learning rate for the atom optimizer. Epsilon end is where the epsilon value will settle after it's been decreased over some number of steps. You want to leave that finite so that you get continual exploration. Uh, dash env is the environment. So this is important for, of course, making the environment. And I've left it here to be flexible so that way you can not only choose different environments, but you can embed the environment name within the file name when you plot the learning function. The factor for decreasing epsilon, the starting value for epsilon, of course, the Max mem, I forgot the hyphen there. Uh, default into a million, that's of course the memory size for your batch replay. Dimensions from the environment, batch size, number of actions, and gamma, which is your discount factor. So all the parameters you'll really need, uh, and actions of course isn't something you're gonna be playing with, dims you won't be playing with, uh, but things like the maximum memory, epsilon, epsilon decrement, things like that you could play with to see how it affects the performance of your agent. So. First thing we need to do is uh, we need to change the uh, input dimensions into something we can use for the model because recall I use an uh, star unpacking in the in the definition of the class. So we will say args dot dims equals list args dot dims. Uh, that will turn it in from an integer into a list, and then we can go ahead and make our environment. So jim dot make args.env and of course this is a string so it'll make lunar lander v2 in this case and we need an agent so we can call the agent we'll pass it gamma the starting epsilon the learning rate dims batch size uh, number of actions It'd help if I could type that correctly number of actions args.maxmem Eps end and um, args dot eps decrement. So this will take all of the parameters from our command line and turn it into an agent. Uh, so next we have to actually play a sequence of games. So we will say at the top of all of them, 
Epsilon history and scores are empty lists. This will keep track of the Epsilon over time so that we can see how the score increases as a function of decreasing Epsilon. And then of course an empty list for the scores to keep track of the scores from every episode. Um, so we want to iterate args.n games over the number of games and you want to set the reset the environment at the top of every one reset your done flag set your score to zero and play your episode so we'll choose an action based on the observation go ahead take that action get the reward done info and new observation in return keep track of your reward and then you want to store that transition um, observation ac action observation underscore uh, I need a reward in there reward comma and the done flag and then of course set the old state to be the new state and tell the agent to learn. At the end of every episode we want to append the uh, agent's epsilon to the epsilon history list epsilon and append the score for the episode. And every 10 games we want to print out a statement that lets us know that it's learning. So if i modulus 10 equals 0 and i greater than 0 Calculate an average mp.mean scores of max of either 0 or i minus 10 all the way up to i plus 1 and then say print episode i score score oops average score F and the epsilon. Good grief. Modulus. Um, I can't type today. 3F modulus agent dot epsilon. Uh, if otherwise, just print episode I score score. Um, and then one last thing to take care of at the end of all of the games you want to make a list with the game numbers sorry the episode numbers i plus one for i in range args.end games and set file name and that is args.env plus underscore alpha plus string of args.learning rate plus gamma let's say string of args dot gamma plus um, dot png so the point here is that you want to name this file based on whatever parameters it is that you're changing so if you're playing with alpha and gamma as hyperparameters then you would embed those in the file name so that way when you look at different files you know okay I changed the learning rate here here and here I changed gamma here here and here uh, so that way when you look at the data you can say okay uh, this is the effect that changing that parameter had on the performance of our agent. Uh, you can do other stuff as well. So for instance, you could say um, up here you could define a parameter for the number of uh, nodes in the fully connected layers uh, or any other real parameter of the model. You could even do the uh, well, that's probably the last, the, uh, the, uh, the optimizer, sorry, you could also do the optimizer and just change the model file to change optimizers, optimizers based on whatever parameters you pass into it. Uh, so that's pretty powerful. Um, I'm not modifying the file to do that, but it is certainly a possibility and something I would recommend. Uh, it's, it's a great option for testing hyperparameters and model architectures in an automated fashion so that you don't have to sit there and type stuff into the command line over and over again. Um, but that is the essence of automating your testing. So let's go to the terminal and run this and see uh, how many typos I made. So here we are in the terminal. Let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. So I already have the commands here just for brevity. 
Uh, let's play something like, instead of 10 games, let's do, let's say 100 games, and let that run. And that'll take a second to run, and when it's done, I will show you the learning plot so you can see the output of the model and kind of get an idea of uh, how useful this would be in actual practice. So one second. All right, so you can see this finished running and the agent learned precisely as we would expect, right? Only 100 games, so it's not, you know, completely beating the game, but, you know, whatever. Uh, so let's take a look at the plot to make sure everything turned out precisely as we'd expect. So you can see here that the uh, plot is actually uh, exactly what you'd expect. You know, you have the blue line that shows how epsilon decreases over time, a sharp decrease, and then the orange plot shows clear evidence of learning over time and I don't know if you can see the file name in the window here but uh, yeah it's on the left here uh, if you look over to the left it says name lunar lander dash v2 underscore alpha 001 gamma 0 0.98 png so the file name has a precise structure we'd expect so when you come back uh, the following day you can decipher uh, what actually uh, the what the effects of the parameters were and that will make your life significantly easier. So let's go back to the terminal one final time to see how you would actually run multiple versions of a model in series so that way you get a whole bunch of plots to wake up to. So uh, the key to making this work is of course the command line itself. Now there may be ways of automating uh, iterating through uh, various parameters uh, but this is just a quick and dirty way of doing this. Whoops. <laughs> one over one. So what you want to do is uh, just take this and copy it, uh, control C, and then you go all the way to the end, two ampersands, and whoops, I didn't want to do that. So you don't want to copy the enter, uh, but what you want to do is put two ampersands and run it twice, and then say on the second time you could add in an extra zero to the learning rate, or you can change the epsilon n to 2, 5, or 5, or whatever. You change whatever parameters you want, and make sure that the file name reflects whatever parameters you're going to change. Uh, but you just separate the extra commands with a double ampersand, and that will actually execute two commands in series uh, if the first is successful. Uh, and you can do this any number of times. So you can have 10 different Python statements. Uh, you can have 10 different Python statements uh, in a row and if you're on a POSIX environment you can actually um, stick this into a separate file and run it so that way you can uh, j edit it one time uh, on a line by line basis and make sure it looks all nice and pretty. So that is it for my process for automated uh, training of reinforcement learning agents and testing out hyperparameters, model architectures, and the like. If you found this helpful, please share. It helps the channel get discovered. Leave a comment down below, a like. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Do you mind?